celebrated one day, there was an Iraqi philosopher by the name of Al-Kindi. Al-Kindi, very known, very well known. Even in Western philosophies, they study about Al-Kindi. Al-Kindi, one day, the youth, I want you to pay attention. Those of you who are playing on your phones, please listen. Al-Kindi, one day, tried to write a book. What is the book? The book is about the conflicts in the Quran. Quran is conflicting itself. Quran is not the book of Allah. There's come some conflicts in the Quran. And he started writing a book. I want you guys to pay attention to this. Because when you go to school, you go to universities, you, go, you hear a lot of such stories. A lot of things. So pay attention. Don't be fooled sometimes by what the educators say. Al-Kindi started writing a book about the contradiction in the Quran. There are contradictions. One of Al-Kindi's students comes to meet Al-Imam Al-Askari, alayhi salam. Imam tells that student of Al-Kindi, he says, isn't there any one of you people, the, the students, who can stand up to your teacher and tell him what you're doing is wrong? Doesn't make any sense. He said, who can say anything to our teacher? Khalas. Yani whatever the professor says, whatever the teacher says, it's like written in stone. And that's not the case. Not necessarily the case. You know, there is always room to discuss, to question. But the problem is we are being bombarded sometimes with specific theories. And these theories, we take them as laws. Especially when they come from a professor. Evolution theory. You know, so many times I have children, youth asking me, evolution, what do we say about evolution? Is it right? There is all this evidence about evolution theory. It is being taught in universities as if it is a law, not a theory. As if it is a law. There's no alternative. So it has to be the case. When you go to the school of economics, the system that is being taught today is what? The interest system. That's the banking system today. Banking is based on interest. I remember a few years ago I had an interview on television after the financial crisis in 2008. There was an interview and the host yeah, no wonder you're crying. I don't blame you. That interest system, it's, it's a crazy system. I don't blame you. Wallah, you know, how many people lost their homes because of it in 2008? We saw the problem. So, the host asked me, he said, you know, in your religion, I heard there is no interest. How does it work? How can you have a banking system with no interest? It, just, it doesn't make sense to them because this is the way that they've been brought up for years, decades. This is the only system taught at the university. So I explained to him, I told him, no, that is not the only system. We have another system where you invest and the bank invests. There's a mutual investment. Today they call it venture capitalist. Venture capitalists, they have an interest in your business. So they will try their best to survive you, to make you survive. That's a difference. And in fact, I met with a professor in the United Kingdom, a professor who did his PhD. He's a Shia. He did his PhD on Islamic banking. And he was recently awarded the highest award that the queen awards an individual in the United Kingdom. It's called the Commander of the British Empire. You know, back in the old days, you know, they're still living, you know, the utopian world, these British people. Back in the old days when they used to have a commander who would conquer land, they would give him this title, the Commander of the British Empire, because he's conquering, increasing the land of the British Empire. That award still exists. So that she gave that award to this man, to this professor. He's a Shia. Because of his contribution about the Islamic banking system in the United Kingdom. So there is another system, but we don't study it as much. It's not there as much. Nonetheless, Imam al-Askari told the student of Al-Kindi, doesn't there anyone for you to stand up to your teacher and tell him about what he's doing is not right? He said, you know, what can we say? He's the teacher, what are, what are we to say? He told him, okay, if I teach you what to do, will you do it? He said, yes. He said, go to him. When you kind of talk to him, speak to him nicely, such that you gain his confidence, you know, don't immediately come and jump at him. No, no, slowly. Take it easy on him. After some time, when he starts feeling comfortable with you, ask him this question. Tell him. When someone writes a book, is it possible that when you read this book, you may not quite understand what the writer has meant? Maybe the writer meant something, but you understood something else. Is that possible or not possible? Ask him. Because he's a professor of philosophy, he's a alim of philosophy, he will say, yes, that is possible. 
So then when he says it is possible, then you throw this question at him. Tell him then, how do you know that what you've understood of the Quran to be a contradiction is really a contradiction? What if you misunderstood? Is that possible or not? And see what he says. So the student then goes to Al-Kindi and does exactly as Imam Al-Askari says. And when the time is right, he tells the, the professor or the scholar, I have a question. What is your question? He says, you know, when someone writes a book and you read it, is it possible that you may not understand the point of the writer? You may misunderstand. Is that possible or not? He looked at me and said, yes, of course it's possible. Then he threw that question at him. He said, so then how do you know that what you've understood of the Quran to be contradiction is truly a contradiction? What if you misunderstood? Allah means something, but you understood something else. Is that possible or not? He paused for a few seconds and said, yeah, that's possible. He said, so then this means your whole book is nonsense because it's based on assumptions, not facts. You're assuming that you understood the Quran. He looked at him and he said, you know what? I never thought about it that way, but you're right. He took his book and threw it into the fire. The whole book is gone. Then the professor, the teacher, came back to the student. He said, who taught you that question? Where did you get that from? So the student initially looked at him and said, well, I thought about it. He said, no, no, no. You know, you're my student and I know you. you know. This question doesn't come from you. Who taught you? Where did you get this from? He said, well, you know, to be honest with you, I went to visit Imam al-Hassan al-Askari, alayhi salam, and he taught me the question. He said, yeah, that's right. Him? Correct. Yeah. People like him come up with such questions. The ulama, the ulama ahlul ilm.